Welcome everyone again to the Lion Speaker Series. Welcome also to those on Zoom. We love to have you here. Uh, it is with great appreciation that we, the residents of Protection Island, acknowledge this land as the unceded territory of the Sinanemo First Nation and their legacy throughout the island. Thank you for, uh, to Rick for coming and setting up the chairs and Emily for doing the Zoom. Uh, donations this week will go to Pina. Last week, donations uh, amounted to $93.50 and uh, they all went to the museum. Rick has a few announcements that he wanted me to mention as well. Uh, for those of you who are going to Clannamorna this uh, tonight, uh, it starts at seven o'clock, uh, gates open at um, 6.30. Also, JFest uh, will be here on uh, February 2nd from 6 to 9 at Beacon House, just to raise a bit of uh, money for Jay because he hasn't been feeling well. Um, I'm sorry, what did you last say? Oh, uh, Jay. The Jay, Jay has not been well. Yeah, so there's a fundraiser uh, and it will be on February 2nd from 6 to 9 here. Yeah, and, and they're looking for donations, like a, about $10 maybe to get in the door, that kind of thing. Well, no, they're also looking for donations for the for a raffle. Yes, yeah, right. there'll be other things as well as, as the door prize, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, this talk is being recorded uh, uh, for future listening, and Emily will let us know when that's available. Questions at the end of the talk, please. Uh, Zoomers, use the chat box or raise your hand so we can see it, and please mute yourself, otherwise... Uh, Zoomers. And now the reason for which we've come. Our speaker today is Dominique Sullivan. Lots of you will know her parents. Uh, Loud Pat Sullivan and uh, Ellen. Uh, I think most of you will know her, know them. Uh, they uh, live in Nanaimo, but they've owned on Protection Island for some time. Uh, Ellen is French. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and, and so uh, Dominique is perfectly bilingual. Uh, she was born in Nanaimo uh, and uh, her education is and has been. She got a teaching degree at VIU and then a business degree in marketing at Bishops in the uh, province of Quebec. And then a master's in librarianship at the University of Alberta. For the last 12 years, Dominique has worked at Corduroy School as the librarian uh, and this is a French immersion school in case anyone didn't know that. As well, Dominique often works as professional resources and books evaluator for the Ministry of Education. Today, Dominique is going to guide us in exploring the value of resources on our TVs and phones. Her talk, exploring podcasts, audiobooks, and streaming services for PI residents will mainly focus on free resources, but also a few subscription things that she feels are worth it. Lastly, she will include how to use the library system at the Vancouver Island Regional Library. No need to take notes as there will be handouts at the end and here they are right here, two pages uh, for you. Uh, there will also be part two to this uh, talk. Dominique will host a follow-up at her home on February 4th. Uh, she will focus on getting those resources that we learn about today actually into our own personal devices. Uh, <laughs> for me, that's the hard part. <laughs> but but they're going to help us. So hey, good. Uh, this will be a fundraiser for the new Pino website. Uh, Dominique is married to Jeremy. Many of you will know that. Uh, they have two children, Oliver and Zoe. Please welcome Dominique Sullivan. Hi. It's going to move the mic a little bit closer. Oh, I'm good. Okay, so I guess my major thing is, is I just want to make sure that this is effective for you and that you take home something. So the idea being is today you just kind of can relax and kind of get the overview. And then if you have more direct questions on the how to's, then bring your devices over to my house. We'll connect to Wi-Fi. I'll show you my TV because sometimes you need to see the application of it. Um, so today, just think about it as a flyby. And then see if there's something that raises your curiosity and, and makes you come see me next week. So it'll be one o'clock next week, um, exactly at this time. And I'll just be at 79 Captain Morgan's. You're welcome to come with your device and be like, put it on here. I just don't know. And then and then we can talk about it. Okay. So that's kind of 
because I sometimes it takes me some processing time to be like, what is it that I want? Or like, how am I going to use this? Why is this important? Um, and so that's what we're going to talk about. Like, when do I use this? How do I do these things? And that kind of stuff. Okay, Emily, let's start with the slideshow. So I asked many people why what they wanted me to cover the most, and it was uh, streaming services, then podcasts and audiobooks. So I switched my presentation around just moments ago, and we're going to start with how to cut cable is really what we're going to start with, because that's the question most people ask. Okay, so to cut cable, you kind of need to have at least a smart TV. So if your TV is very, very old, no problem. There's lots of ways of dealing with that and we can make it into a smart TV. So I'm just gonna kind of go through a couple of these. Emily, are you okay if I move? Yeah, okay. So basically if you have an old TV, I'm just gonna start with old TVs. You can use any of these three devices here. So the Apple TV, it plugs into your machine and it makes it into a smart TV. Okay, same thing with the Roku. So the Apple TV, the last time I checked, it was like $199. Uh, the Roku is, sometimes I've seen them down to 20 bucks. And you can just plug this little bit into the back and then it becomes a smart TV. Um, there's also an Amazon Fire Stick. And uh, I think this one I've seen nine bucks. Mm -hmm. um, just one comment, the Apple TV, old TVs may not have an HDMI. You have to have an HDMI. Yeah. You have to have an HDMI. Right. Okay. Other than that, you know. And what is an HDMI? Yeah. HDMI. It's the thin, it's a, it's a sort of square cable. Instead of the thin that goes in. It goes in the back. Exactly. You can see, but this is an HDMI. Jack says an HDMI. So you just need to have a port like that and then it turns it in. And then also, um, if you're choosing an Apple TV, for example, I can take my phone and I can mirror it and push things up without plugging anything in and turn my TV into my phone, if that makes any sense. So sometimes I'm lazy. I'm like, I'll show people slides or picture or whatever. Okay. Then um, what are the other pieces? So yeah, so these are all different things. The Roku has a Roku channel that's included. So you get free channels just by buying this one. There's free channel in the Firefly stick. So there are free, tons of free stuff. Like right now I'm watching on Roku, uh, Home and Garden. Uh, anyway, I'm watching BBC Home and Garden right now. And so I'm getting it through this way. So there's lots of different ways of doing it. So I just wanted to show you, first you need your device. Okay, next slide. Uh, obviously, if you have a, a smart TV, then you're already winning. Um, so this is just free movie channels. So what you do is you go onto your smart TV, then you gotta think about your smart TV with whatever device you want becomes a phone. So you gotta go to the app store in your phone or in your computer or your TV, then you download these apps and then you open them from there. And that's what is basically happening. So on every smart TV, you need to go to the Google Play store or you need to go to like whatever store it is. And then you need to download um, Tubi is the one I kind of use the most, but and Roku, so these are two, but there are tons of TV shows, tons of movies, and sometimes it's a bit older where the licensing is a bit different, but it's all still there. Um, and just remembering your licensing is 50 years past the author or the publication. And so a lot of times it'll go past licensing and then it'll be available on a lot of the stuff. So if you like old movies, you're in luck. It's going to be all for free. Okay, so this is just free movie channels that you can get, but you've got to download them onto your TV. Okay, so first we start a device, then you got to download. Okay, Emily had it. Then the question is, well, I have news. How do I watch the news, right? That's the next question I get with cutting cable. So again, I've downloaded different things. So this Haystack one is absolutely my favorite app to download. So this Haystack, what you do is you download the app, then you make a free account, and then after that, you tell it what you like. It's a, a curation site. So I like CBC, CNN, ABC News, Al Jazeera, like whatever I want to put on there. Yes, BBC, like whatever you're interested in. And you can also add, add it to ask a local topic. So I put in BC, Nanaimo. So also I have local news as well that gets filtered into it. Um, and so then when I go select, I can select my headlines and it's, a whole bunch of different sites that have been curated into this one app. So it's a curation site. Then I can go to my entertainment. I can go to like editor picks. I can, so there's just lots of different things. And then there are ads in it that is free, but the ads, I don't find that bad. And sometimes I'll switch back and forth between two different news and then it turns the ad off. Mm -hmm. So it does have ads. That's the downside of being free. 
Um, so then there's also global. You can download global. There is a ton of stuff. When I was leaving the house, my husband was listening to Saturday Night Live on the global app for free. So you could watch global at six if you want, but you can watch it scandally at seven or 7.15 if you wanted. And the nice thing about this is that they're all asynchronous. So when you're ready, well, you turn it on. You don't have to wait till 11 o'clock at night for Saturday Live or whatever it is, right? So you can turn it on Saturday, Sunday morning, right? Whatever. So on here, there's Survivor. There's like a whole bunch of stuff that's on global. Mm -hmm. This is all for free. Go for it, right? 34 seasons. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, and then here we've got CBC. CBC also has another one called Gem. I find it a little bit glitchy. I prefer to have the feed into Haystack, and I just find it's a little smooth. But it is available if you just want this, okay? Then this is, you can also get Slack TV, and this is $12 a month, but it has History Channel, it has HGTV, Food Network. So, it, so you can buy sometimes small bundles like this if you're wanting it. And then, um, Emily, if you, you can't see behind it, but this is an app that's MLB TV. So my husband's obsessed with baseball. Mm -hmm. So we just buy the baseball channel, but he can buy, like when he buys the baseball channel, um, he gets it in the same show. One's from Chicago, the other side's from New York. So he can choose which which show, like he, which, home which home direction he wants to watch it. He can watch it later. He can watch it live. So just know that you can buy sports packages as well. So if you're, you just have to look at what your budget is, right? How much is cable? I shouldn't blow the budget with too many subscription services, but I can also cut it and have things that are on my time. And I don't have to like the baseball. He doesn't have to watch it when it's live. He watches it when he's ready. I know it's amazing with stuff. Okay. Continue. Okay, so the other thing, and this is just kind of a sidebar, which I can't help say, is I love LastPass. LastPass keeps passwords. <laughs> so okay. I have a subscription to LastPass, and it scans my face and opens everything online for me. And I, any passwords I want, I go to the vault, I can look to see um, what my password is, I can ask it to launch and open it. And we're talking like, my Shaw bill, my, you know, my BC Hydro bill, like everything is connected in there. And so then when I have a password breach, I can very quickly figure out what the password is and also change it very quickly. I just find it's much more effective than notepad people. Okay. <laughs> so I, I love LastPass. It's highly, highly encrypted. Yeah. Very, very difficult. Like facial recognition too. However, do not lose <laughs> yeah, your master password. 12 digit password. Okay. Yes. So um, there's a lot of sure that is that amount current? Yeah, I just checked it. Oh, so I was gonna because say because I pay a little bit more because it's single. Oh it's four ninety five or four fifty for a single US. Okay, and then five dollars a month for families. And why I'm saying for families, you get six subscriptions. So I'm going to go give one to my parents. Both of my kids have it. And what I can do is I can push them a Netflix Netflix password, and then you don't ask me for it, <laughs> right? So I can also share passwords amongst the family of groups. Um, so I just anyway, so I'm setting up my parents with this when they get back to Bali. Okay, next one. It's just it's a worthwhile one. Okay, so streaming. So this is caught. These are things that I think are worth the cost. I think Netflix, it's it's always good. I think keeping Netflix is worth it. I think some people don't like it, but I, I think it's really good. Biggest catalog. You know what? Apple TV, you don't have to have an Apple TV machine to watch Apple TV. You can go to any smart TV, download the Apple TV app, and it can be on a Samsung, it can be on a whatever, um, and then you get access to their stuff. And last I checked, I think it's $10.99 a month. But the show and the programming is superior. Like they don't have a huge catalog, but the stuff they do is incredible. Like if I'm looking for a high quality show, it's going to be on Apple TV. Okay. So I can't help it. That's the Ted Lasso's. Hold on a second, Lynn. Uh, that's the Ted Lasso's. That's, you know, there's a whole bunch of, I can't even go through them all. But anyway, really good stuff. Quick question, Lynn, because we have some questions at the end. Because... If you have a show that's on Netflix and you can see it through Apple TV, 
What it's doing is it goes out and it gets it through there yeah, and brings it in. So it takes more um, bandwidth. So sometimes the MTD gets glitchy. So if you have a show when it's on one of the other ones that's direct, do the direct. Got Don't it. Do it through TV. Got it. Because this is we're not talking about the machine. We're talking about the app that you download, which is slightly yeah, different. Yeah, exactly. This is Spotify, just like music. Um, and I just think the playlists that are created, and I'll explain how I listen to that. I just think Spotify is worth it. I have a family account as well. Um, my parents share on this as well. And, and we'll talk about how I connect it and what it looks like. It all, I would only get Disney Plus if you're obsessed with Star Wars or you have kids. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's mostly geared in that zone. So just letting you know. And then this one's quite interesting. Prime TV actually has some good stuff. And they also have some free, they, if you buy it, you get free shipping as well. So there, if you have a, anyway, so to me, it's a good one. Okay, next slide. I'll show you why that matters. Okay, so when you are ordering, so Prime Video is a whole thing. Um, the Marvelous Miss Maisel, there's a whole bunch of fabulous shows on there. That's unbelievable. Now, when you are buying something on Amazon, you know you can get it shipped. You just have to change the address, change to pick up. And then you select the Nanaimo Po 140 Terminal Avenue, and that goes to the post office right under Cliff Street. That's right by um, Ajax. Oh, that oh yeah, it can also show London Royals. Okay, because just notice that if you wanted to order Amazon packages, you can do so from the island, and they keep it for 14 days for you. So that's why I just wanted to show how to order something online if you're ordering on Amazon. <laughs> it was just like a weird sidebar. <laughs> if you happen to be ordering, if you're going to get uh, Prime Video, it comes with this benefit and you can still use it on protection. When I discovered that, I was like, because <laughs> I order a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay, next one. Okay, any questions about streaming before I go into why podcasts? So the last pickup pick up locations is not just if it's by the mail, but if it's by courier, they can take it to those places. The thing is, it's only Amazon. So I've tried because sometimes when I order something online, it won't show you what courier they use. If oh. they use if they use Canada Post, you can go up and sign up something called Flex Delivery, and it'll send it to that that delivery address that's on near Cliff Avenue. However, it, it comes across as a, a PO box, and some yeah. places will not ship to a PO box. So sometimes it's, it's tricky with the Flex. Totally. Except when it says, when it doesn't tell me, like sometimes it's ace courier. So then you're a little screwed. So that's the tricky part is that you can order on Amazon and anything Amazon will go there. I've never had an issue, but it's when I'm on a, another website and I don't know the courier. If it says Canada Post, I'm good to go. But everything else, risky. Then I send it to my parents or like a stable address that I know. <laughs> or work. <laughs> That I've had zero problems lately with ATS delivered to Diamond Delivery. Oh, okay. So they'll try this. So I just put you know, pirates money in it. Yeah, yeah. And then they take it to uh, one of the, the uh, one of the. So it's a bit of a drive. But yeah. Yeah, a little, a little bit more reliable. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Well, a lot of times, that, like uh, Dominique was saying, you'll get a kind of a funky delivery, like ATS, that's what, Alberta Health Services or something, I don't know. Yeah. Right? And so what will happen is they'll, the, they'll, the driver will pick it up in the morning and, and, and they'll go, well, I don't go to Protection Island. So then he takes it back and then you'll get a notification that you need to pick it up at uh, ATS Health Services, yeah. doing business as Diamond Delivery. And Diamond Delivery is out by um, Petroglyph, um, Way up there. You just have to go up there. Yeah. To actually recognize that because I've had three packages sent back by the same company back and forth, back and forth, and 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 I can't get them to recognize anything. Oh. I sent an email. I sent my telephone number right on the package. Yeah. Then I would just get somebody in town. They say, "Hey, can I drop it off at your house?" Yeah. yeah. It's unfortunate. It just is what it is. So then the next thing is, so if you have any questions about streaming, I'm happy to go through my TVs at home. If you want to come in a week and have a look, what does it look like? How do I switch over? What's on there? Feel free to come over. Okay. All right. Podcasts. So podcasts are, so wh why do it? I always think like, like, what's the point? My dad would be like, I don't know I'm listening to that. And uh, yeah, down to Mexico, he sure did. Oh, so... <laughs> Stop listening to CBC radio. 
I love listening to stories. I love being read to. I love interesting conversations and podcasts allow you to, it, it almost like you get to be in an interesting conversation. So especially during, I got into the, during pandemic when I just wasn't able to have grand conversations with my nerdy friends. And I realized this like allows me to have like that nerd factor filled without looking to Jeremy to be like, do you want to talk about Ukraine? No, he doesn't. <laughs> so, so I'm going to go get a podcast that talks about it and then fill that part of me because my brain is just a curious brain. So why do? So number one is they're shorter episodes. I have one that's 15 minutes of history. What happened on this day, 15 minutes uh, in history. So it's just short, quick. And I learn about all sorts of different things throughout history. Yeah. Uh, it's called the daily, history daily. Okay. It's free. It's asynchronous, which means that you can listen to it when you want. You know, sometimes when I miss, you know, the debaters or something like it's harder to go back online and find it. So I just find that um, there's a podcast for that. And a lot of CB stuff, CBC stuff is now on podcast. And it also it's intimate and it's inviting. It just feels like you're in a conversation and there's something filling, especially if you have like a loneliness piece or you just don't have enough nerds to talk to. Um, it's, it just fills that void for me. Okay, next slide. Okay, so how do I listen to it? So then I just want you to picture like, why would I do this thing? So these are, I just really like Google products. The first one I bought was this one over here, which is the Nest. Um, or not the nest, the little one. This one's like 40 bucks, 50 bucks, something like that. And you just ask it questions. Hey, Google, what's the weather? What's the news? Play a podcast. And so my, I gave this to my, I'll give my parents an example. I gave this to my dad. What's this? <laughs> they use it nonstop. If they got pulled from the house, they'd freak out. So then I updated a couple of Christmases later. I just like the screen where it shows what's playing and I can move the volume. I can swipe it. So I just like, and also, for example, when I'm cooking, I'll be like, hey, what is three grams to ounces? Um, and it'll convert it. It'll show me a table on it. Or I'll be, you know, I'll just ask, oh, hey, what time is London Drugs open till? And it'll tell me. So there's just something really convenient. And I understand that not everyone is okay with the privacy piece do your research. I'm just telling you for me, I've done my research. I don't want to have that discussion today. Um, feel free to do your research if you're into it, but for convenience sake, I love the thing. I love it, love it, love it. There's three companies that make these. Yeah. Google, Amazon, and Apple. Yeah. And they make very- I just like the Google ones. <laughs> so let's that's, Same thing. That's Amazon. 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 Yeah, like so. yeah. Yeah. All, all similar. So what I do is in the mornings, I'll say, hey, Google, what's the news? Or my favorite thing is when I come home at the end of the day, I'll say, hey, Google, what uh, play CBC World at Six? And then it plays me the CBC and it's the vocal of the national. So it's the it's the audio of the national. So it's like I listen to the national while I'm talking about issues. OK, so you can do all that. Or I say, hey, play me CBC Radio One, whatever. So I can play all that stuff. So this is kind of when I'm kind of cooking around my house. Then I also would recommend, I love um, headphones that block out sound. Like they are so important. And I have it my set. Did I bring my two sets? Yes, I have my jack. Okay. So, and they have to be wireless. Because when I'm doing folding laundry, oh my gosh, the amount of times I've ripped it out and like ripped my ears, no more. <laughs> so the distance on these are really far. And so this is what I look like when I'm, folding and putting away laundry. I'm going room to room and I'm still listening to a podcast or something like that. So I just wanted to show you that. And also where this is important is traveling, the plane. Yeah. That is what you need it for. It's basically you're deadening out every other sound. And so noise canceling headphones are a good investment um, if you're looking at doing that. I just think when you're traveling, when I'm at Costco, oh my gosh. Shh. <laughs> and then I go... <laughs> And I'm listening to an audiobook. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's the point. <laughs> because I work in a school that has 400 families, because I know so many people I've lived here my whole life, I love putting these on. It tells other people, not today. <laughs> yes. Yes. You have a You have to. Nope. It just goes Bluetooth to this. No, it depends on. 
Are you boot? What are you Bluetoothing to? Your well, because these are Apple, I can Bluetooth it to my Apple TV, and I, I yes. they're easy. Um, yes. but you can Bluetooth it. Most things will Bluetooth to a smart TV. Okay, so I just London Drugs. You just say, hey, I just need a, a good pair, or if you want, I can make up a recommendation list for next week and just say, here's my medium low. You know, you can spend about fifty bucks to five hundred bucks. So, um, I think a good pair though is about a hundred bucks. You're, if you're spending less than that, there probably won't be enough. But I just think if you are traveling, there there is nothing better than putting this on, letting the plane go away, and you're just like, you know, listening to something amazing. So I can shut out my interruptions when I'm trying to do my own. Yeah, and then you're like, sorry, I can't hear you, can't hear you. Okay, and then the other thing I just wanted to show you is I, okay, I think next slide. Okay. This one. Okay, so this is what this is. So I just wanted to show you what this is. These are sleep headphones. So I can lay down, I can do yoga, and I don't have things poking into my ears. I also can do this. <laughs> really don't want to. And so my struggle is, is I get really bad insomnia and I wake up at two at two in the morning and I don't want to read because I'm going to get woken up with the light. I don't want to have my phone, I'm the blue light. I don't want to get up and watch TV, but I'm laying there like. <laughs> so what I do is I will put on an audiobook or podcast. I put the timer on so it turns off and I just, it fills that space for me. What's the so this one is low. The, the sound quality, I'm not going to go, I can't go on a plane with this. Like there's too much other sound coming in. Um, but I also, when I'm really stressed out and I'm having a bad day, my go-to is I get a heat blanket and a heat pack and I put this on and I listen to a meditation, a podcast meditation. Mm -hmm. And I just find that to soothe my soul. So I just wanted to show you that there's different ways of listening. So there's so I go, I go here. I can, I can show you when we talk about if you come over. But I go on to settings, Bluetooth, and then I select this, and then the sound directly goes. And it's quite a distance that I can go with these. This one I can go all around the yard, including the, like gardening. And then this one's in the house only. Yeah. And it's nice not carrying it in your your pocket. The only thing is, if you're going to buy one, I would recommend getting a volume button, just because I hate having to go all the way back to my phone. Not a huge fan of these ones, but they were given to me. Okay, makes sense. So I just want to say, this is how I listen. This is when I listen. Okay, next one. Yeah, that's what I mean. They're cheap. Yeah, you didn't see the price. That's why I was like, they're 29 bucks. Oh, these ones are no. They're way more. They're way more. Okay. Okay, so let's go, Emily, do you mind being my, my DJ? And I need to go to the podcast recommendation list. So now if you don't have one of the sheets, I'm going to be doing the podcast list. Yeah, that one. Okay. So with this one, can we go into a little bit bigger? I don't know if I can do the full. It's doing. There we go. That's fine. That's close enough for me. Are you guys good with that? Okay. So I'm just going to kind of go through and I'm just going to, when I would do a book talk, but I'm going to do a podcast talk. So I'm going to pitch these to you. And I try to really have a wide variety of stuff in there. That's there's something in here for everyone. Um, so we'll start. All right. Okay. So run, hide, repeat up here, uh, produced by CBC. She's a CBC reporter out of Vancouver, I believe. And it's about her childhood. She grew up and her dad would be like, don't tell anyone we are. We need to move. We need to go. And she had to move all the time and she couldn't figure out why. And so as she got older, she really started to ask herself, why did I have this type of childhood? What was true? What wasn't? And, and what, what were we running from? The story has so many twists and turns. I have to say, it keeps you guessing. Um, eight episodes. And they're really good. Well done. Uh, good CBC. I just finished this one when I was in Mexico, surviving El Chapo. So that is about two twins. They were born in Chicago and they, um, their dad was a drug dealer and they were dealing drugs for El Chapo, but then they decided to turn stateside and to turn on him and rec was the only recording that was possible with his voice. And so they, and they turned stateside evidence. So it's the whole story of like how they rose to, they were the d drug distributor in the United States, how they rose, how they flipped, what it was like to work to the DA and the whole, the whole story is 
crazy. So I love learning about worlds that I would never go into. Like weird sidebar, for example, surviving El Chapo didn't know. Um, when you package a key of Coke, you put bike tires in it so that if you need to throw it overboard, it floats. <laughs> so, so like I got to like understand a world that I would never understand, but that's what's neat about a podcast is that it's storytelling from many different perspectives. Okay, so that's that one. Wind of Change. Wind of Change, you know the song, the rock anthem from the 80s? Take me, you know the song? Yes, okay. Anyway, Wind of Change is a song. Um, apparently it was written by the CIA as a soft propaganda to promote um, dissemination in the USSR to try to bring down communism. Okay. Believe it or if you'd like or not, um, but there is lots of uh, evidence of the CIA doing these things. For example, they have they funded a couple, like Nina Simone went over to Africa, they call it soft power, and CIA, they didn't, Nina Simone didn't know that she was working for the CIA, but it was to try to engage African countries to say Western and not go to communism. So we have like, evidence of a lot of this kind of stuff. So it took 10 years to research. They asked tons of questions. They interview people from all over the music industry. So if you're a music lover, this is a story and a half, okay? Scamamanda. Scamamanda was kind of the new, new one this year was kind of my favorite, really well edited. So she said that she had cancer, raised a ton of money, but did she? And so the question is, or it is fascinating, the twists and turns again of this story. Um, does she have cancer? And then you're like, I don't know. Did she? I, yes, maybe. And, you know, anyway, like I just found it was so interesting because this GoFundMe situation that we're in <clears throat> at this time. Sorry, I just got something in my throat. Question so far. Am I going too fast, right pace? Nothing online, Emily. <clears throat> okay, it's gonna keep going. <clears throat> okay, Michael Jackson's story. I just thought it was so interesting that it made me feel uncomfortable to look. Can you separate the art from the artist? And I just think it's really interesting to look at his life in a way that's, you know, I think some people are very love Michael Jackson and brush over the bad stuff, but I think it was really interesting to have the story in chronological order. It was just really interesting. So it was Think Twice, and it was by Leon Nagant, and he is unbelievable. Okay, normal gossip. This was like, if you want some trash. Um, so this is people write in and change their names anonymously, and then talk about gossipy stories that have happened. So for example, one of the first ones I listened to, um, forward the first like 10 minutes, because they talk about what does gossip mean to you? Who cares? <laughs> And then get through that. <laughs> and then the stories are so juicy. For example, there was like a gay men's choir or quartet, but like two of them were together and then they broke up and then they went with the other one. And so like he joined this gay, gay quartet and there was just like so much infighting and there was a dog and a separation. And you kind of like, like how trashy people are. So it's kind of like people behaving badly. So if you like that, it was. Or I saw another one where it was like two warring fruit stands and they end up throwing fruit at each other. Like <laughs> the humanness of humanity. Okay, British scandal, I totally think it's a hilarious. Um, they just talk about scandals that happen in England. So a wide variety, like I didn't know that somebody forged Hitler's diaries. That whole thing was fascinating. Or like, uh, what does an English gangster look like? I just did the, the, the craze. Anyway, it's really interesting. So that one's really good. This one's another BBC um, from England. You're dead to me. They go over different people in history. They just talk about like Caligula to, uh, you know, a wide variety of people. And so if you like a, a, a fun um, look at history, lots of jokes, it was very entertaining if you're a history buff from this one. Um, fiasco was fantastic. I obviously wasn't around at the start of AIDS. Um, but it was so interesting to kind of hear the story of like how this it developed and what kind of communities it went through and and how the response what fascinating so i just have to say it was really it made me understand a, a pandemic in a different way especially for a marginalized population okay keep going there's another page scroll down okay this one, two boys out of bc come out of the backwoods no one knows who they are who are these boys how long they've been living in the woods. Mm. 
So that's a BC story about two boys in the back country that pop out of nowhere. Who are these kids? Great story. Um, so this one's S-Town, it's actually Shittown. And uh, this guy, he writes to a journalist. He says, my town is a shit town, my town is a town. So the journalist finally, like after five years, okay, I'm coming to your town, show me why it's the case. And it's really the story of like middle America, Rust Belt, what happens to a town as it degrades. Fascinating. But just like, again, really well done. Ologies for my science nerds. So ologies is anything science. So I listened to like the science of raccoons was fascinating. Moss, whales, um, mm -hmm. bird, like gel the jellyfish episode blew my mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they talk about it with such like fun and reverence. Like, you know, it's always like, get out of town, jellyfish, do that. You know, that excitement around science. So if you're looking for like a fun just to blow your mind that the, you know, that mother nature does amazing things just to see the human, the natural world in a different way. Really fun, that's all of you. Okay, so these are my, this is my political section. Slow burn, I started with the first episode. It's the storytelling is unbelievable. The very first episode is this whole story of Nixon and Watergate, but told in a way that I had no idea. Like I had no idea there's a woman named Mar Martha Mitchell. The very first episode is called Martha. Martha Mitchell, she was um, Nixon's campaign chair's wife, but she had a mouth on her. They called her the mouth from the South. And she would have tons of cocktails and then phone reporters late at night and give them inside tips. Mm -hmm. So when the whole Watergate was down, they took her into a room, they drugged her and ripped the phone out of cord and held her there for two days. Like there's stories of Watergate because Watergate came drip by drip by drip. It to put it all together in this way, it made me understand way more of what's happening today and how, you know, how, how do you kind of anyway? So slow burn the very first season was um it was uh, Watergate. The second season was Monica Lewinsky. The third season was uh, Tupac Shakur and and how he died in Biggie Smalls. So a wide variety of things. I think the latest one was Clarence Thomas. So like, there's like seven different seasons. They're all really good. I just have to bring up Bagman because um, while Watergate was happening, there was Spirit Agnew. Oh my God. Spirit Agnew was his vice president. He was so cold. Yeah. He was taking envelopes of cash in the White yeah. House, like full cash bribes. But you had no idea because Watergate was so big that it, no one talked about it. So to me, there's like a missing story here that is like unbelievable. So bad, bad news to like Mitchell Maddow is- She's great. She's an excellent, excellent storyteller. Mm -hmm. The Daily, so every day the New York Times produces a podcast. Um, it's about half an hour long. I listen to it most mornings as I wake up. I just find it's really good reporting. Um, I force CBC's got pretty much everything you can imagine. I really like Front Burner. I also love Stuff the British Stole. It is amazing <laughs> because like not the stuff they stole, but I, it's an Australian show. And what it does is it goes through a piece of, of in a museum. How'd it get there? It is, and it's really the story of colonial, colonization through artifacts. So looking at the Benoit bronze, it's looking at the shrunken head that's in like a museum. How do you repatriate that? Do you repatriate that? And so now I, it makes me look at museums very differently um, and understanding what that role is and, and what we should do. The last one I'm gonna go with is Rabbit Hole and this is New York Times. So this little T is New York Times, these two. Um, and Rabbit Hole, okay, I'm just gonna be very honest. I don't know how people get into conspiracy theories. It, it, I don't know how you get there. Conspiracy theories, this explains how people get there. And they, what's interesting about this is they, it's YouTube and they follow different people and their search history and how they went super right-winged, but also super left-wing. It's those fringes, how they went that way and what radicalizes us. So it's really the story of radicalization. Fascinating stuff, right? Okay, go back to my slides. Any questions about podcasts there? So they're shorter. Shorter. Like a, a story. Yeah. So I want you to think about like driving. You're you're going out to Costco. You can pound out an episode. 
you know, like you don't think that you have to waiting for the dentist. Yeah. You know, like pound one out. And what's funny is when I go traveling, um, I just find it's really like when I was in Mexico, I just find it's actually really hard to read. It's so bright, the white page that it hurts my eyes. But man, I just laid and looked at the palm trees. It was great and had my ears full, right? Yeah. Okay. Are we good to any other questions? Podcasts? So podcasts are done through an app on your phone. If you have an Apple phone, it's a purple sign and you already have the machine that does it. You just have to search the ones I've given. Okay. Uh, do I have it on one of the slides, Emily? I think go go back the page before. Keep going. Looks like it. Keep going. One more. This one. This one. So this is the app that's already on your phone. If you have an Apple, like just open it and then search the page I gave any of the ones that interest you on. Or you can go through Spotify or you can, if you have Prime, Apple or Prime Music or Google Player, like there's a million ways to play it. Okay. And they're all free. Okay. Go back, go back, go back. Okay. Here. So I just wanted to say why audiobooks now? So now I'm going to pitch you, why do I do audiobooks? Audiobooks, when the, when the author reads the book, it is magic because they are reading it to the way that their brains have written it. And so just think when the author narrates it, there's an, a value added there. And also some for the other piece is nonfiction. I sometimes find really gritty. I can pound through a nonfiction book by listening to it so much faster than I can read it. Sometimes I just can't, just can't do it. <laughs> and so sometimes when I have to get through something, I listen to it. So I'll give you an example. I was doing my master's. I would listen to my books, pause it, go over to Google Docs on my phone, narrate my paper, and then pause it and then go back to the, the manual. So that's, I would do it back and forth. Yeah. Okay. Um, sometimes like there's bonus material. So like sometimes if you get um, like, for example, a meditation book, well, they have guided meditations in it. Right. So there's nice bonus material in an audio book that you don't get on paper. And also when they're multicast, it's like a, you're getting your own private reading of like a whole cast. So some books are just better audio books. Not all books, so some books I do paper, or the other thing you have to really be careful with audiobooks is always test your voice. Listen to the voice, does it irritate the crap out of you? If it does in the first two minutes, don't get the book, you won't do 20 hours. <laughs> you won't make it, it's a waste of your time and money. So sometimes I'll be like, oh, this book sounds so good. I'll listen to it and be like, oh. okay, that'll be a paper book. And I'll like pay attention to what, and it's really the narration that makes me decide if it's paper or if it's an audio. Okay, so when do I do it? I do it while cooking, while folding laundry, while driving, traveling. That's a super important one. We talked about blocking out the noise. Insomnia, I just sometimes need something to do at 3 a.m. Um, and then also relaxing at the beach, just to snow clear. Okay, next one. Oh, and I should mention, so before you click, I um, have the subscription of Audible. So Audible is the same. So if you have a, an Amazon account, you also have an, an um an Audible account. They're the same login. Okay. Except if you want to buy a subscription, this one's $14 a month and it gives you one free book a month. Or you can use the, um, this is the library app and it's called Libby and you just download it. It's by Overdrive and you can get all these books for free from the public library as well. So you can get free ones. The only thing is sometimes you have to wait for these. Like if the book's checked out, you have to wait for it to become back and then you get it. Audible, I just have no patience. So I just buy it. So that's no problem. I just, if I want the book, I want it now. Okay, next one. Oh, right, now I need my uh, selection sheets. And then, I'm, then I, I should be good. Coming to an hour. Okay. Yes, audiobook recommendations. Okay, no problemo. Take your time. There it is. That one. Thanks. I love having a roadie that does everything. It's good. <laughs> no, most of the time. Okay. Everyone's good if I start blasting into this. And again, if you're overwhelmed, come over next week. We can talk about it more. Okay. Very first one, you must read Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah speaks six languages. He mimics his mom and he reads the book. He is an unbelievable comedian. And there's stories about him growing up in apartheid South Africa. 
So when he was born, his dad is white, his mom is black, he was born a crime. If he would have played out in his front yard, the police would have come because he's a different color than his mom and they kept the color, it's very segregated. So he would have been removed and put with other colors who match the skin color. And so to hear stories after story, like his stories are unbelievable. If you haven't read this book, it is by far my number one recommendation. And just the way he speaks is just like butter in a South African accent. Mm -hmm. So just absolutely like, don't read the paper copy. This better is not. Okay. If you haven't read Tara Westover, or, um, educated by Tara Westover, anyone here has read that book? <gasps> okay. So she comes from a family of, of high mental illness, um, a Mormon family. And what happens is her dad is crazy. Like she has a head for the hills bag under her bed. Like they've buried gas for the end of the world. This is the kind of thing. And she is not allowed to go to school at all. And she kind of runs away and ends up going to university. And she, so she shows up at university and now she's a university Oxford professor. Cool. So she's gone from like an absolute, like if you want to think about like gun toed and Appalachian kind of people and then to hear her story, unbelievable. Uh, it's a story and she reads the story. So it's a story about her life. Um, Unbroken by Laura Hildebrand. So if you haven't read that story or heard about it, it's World War II. It's a story about, um, it's excellent. And it's Lou... I want to say Pegliati, Rigliati, something like that. Anyway, Lou is the main character. And it's a true story about this guy's life. He was such a jerk growing up. Um, they had to put him in track team. And then he ended up going to the Olympics. And it was the Olympics in Berlin. He ended up gripping down a flag, a Nazi flag, and getting caught. He met Hitler. Like, he's just, you know, one of these guys that just things happen to. Anyway, his plane goes down in the South Pacific. He gets enlisted, he, you know, plane goes down in the South Pacific and he ends up floating for the longest any humans floated in the middle of the Pacific. I won't tell you what happened, but I'm like, I still have the scene, the, like the shark scene memory. Anyway, and then he floats and he ends up, I'm not telling the thing, and he ends up in a prisoner of war camp. And so the story but you know, it's not depressing. It really makes you feel the human spirit is incredible. So it's it's a story and it's it's written by a female and I think it's the first female author I've read about war stories. And there's just, there was a there was a, a detail I hadn't read in a, in a war story before. Yeah, she wrote Sea Biscuit. Sea Biscuit, yeah. 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 She's incredible. And you know, these books would be equal, good as paper, but again, there's just the narration or something makes them a little bit better. Um, if you haven't read Hannah Gatsby, oh, I've got it in. Um, she's hilarious. She's got autism. She's an Australian comedian. Um, she's gay and awkward and wonderful. And her, her narration and her humor is cutting and fun. So if you haven't met Hannah Gatsby, she's really fun. Anyway, 10 steps in the net. Um, I put in Seth Rogen. So Seth Rogen is kind of a very big pot smoking kind of guy who's a comedian. But it's his memoirs of being in Vancouver growing up. So heads up, lots of drug stuff in there. But hilarious. I don't think I've laughed so hard out loud in my life. Um, I'm not a huge Kevin Hart fan, but his autobiography was great. <laughs> so, you know, like this is where, like, think about your, your. Uh, I just think that your memoirs, your autobiography are better in audiobook read from the person who's lived them. There's a difference. Pardon? He reads that. He, oh, yeah. And he's very funny. And so, like, he had a DUI and he talks really frankly about what happened and, like, how much of an idiot he was and, like, the life lesson he learned from this. Yeah. So then here's, and then the other thing it also really does is self help. Self help is really good as an audiobook. Um, Lost Connections by Johan Harari. So he, he basically, his premise is look, antidepressant meds have been going up every single year since he was born. Why? So he goes around the world and he talks about the nine causal factors of depression and the six buffering factors that you can put in your life to reduce that. And it's all done in story. So he brings in statistics, but I love that blend of statistics and story to make the point. You know, like for example, one of the buffering factors we know is to be in nature. So he goes and he hikes the Rocky Mountains and he talks about why this buffering factor and why you need to have nature. 
I won't give away the rest, but it, his storytelling is incredible. He's also done ones of Chasing the Scream, Stolen Focus, um, quite a few different ones. And his newest one is about weight loss, the BS of weight loss drugs. Okay. Dan Harris, it's a meditation book. It's kind of a his guide to like, um, yeah, he's just a news anchor and he had a panic attack on live TV. And it's his seeker's journey and he just talks about it so i just appreciate it it's a meditation book but it's funny yeah and then this is the type of meditation that i do it's called mindful self-compassion and there's meditations in there so this is the book that i was talking about oh yeah yeah it was in yoga class today for five so this book okay page down i'm going through them fast i'm going to get you out of here okay next one so i just had to have a whole stripe of just if you don't know taylor jenkins reed as an author unbelievable so good okay daisy jones and the six daisy jones and the six don't read the book it's a multicast every person every chapter is a different person and it's this it's a fictitious story but the rise and fall of a band in the 70s so think sex drugs rock and roll fur glitter the whole bit um, you know, in the implosion of a band. Oh. And so each chapter, one is from the keyboard player. The next chapter is from the music producer. The other chapter is from the lead singer. So it's just, and the narration, I've, I've never, like I was in the airport coming back um, from Palm Springs and I was just like weeping in the airport. The end is so good. <laughs> <laughs> and I just think it's the perfect place because I just, I, I don't know. I'm too. I'm too antsy to sit and read, so I can like power walk and listen. It's also, it's also a movie, but I I couldn't do it because my brain made a better picture with this audio book. It's also on um, Prime Video as well. Okay. Um, this one is just about. It's, they're all of her books are really good. Malibu Rising. It's about a rich family who's like descendants or, um, the kids of a, a very rich singer who abandoned them. So it's kind of like these four kids talking about what it's like to grow up in Malibu when their dad's really screwed mm -hmm. off. It's just a good story. And then Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. She's a famous actress and she's married seven times. And it talks about all her different husbands. Very good. Okay. So this one, Scythe, am I, am I going too fast? I know I'm bringing lots, but I'm just like, you just choose what you want to listen to. Scythe is a, a young adult. So I wanted to at least bring one YA book. Um, and so YA books, great. They just don't have rape scenes and they just are a little bit faster and a little bit fluffier. So Scythe is about imagine a world that has no cancer, no death, no nothing. And then the worry about the overpopulation. So there's a certain breed of people who are Scythe, who are Grim Reapers, and they are trained in the art of death poisons, hand-to-hand -hand combat, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so they will go up to somebody and glean them. Um, <laughs> And to, but it's like so fascinating to talk about, well, who deserves it? How do we do this? And they talk a lot about the age of mortality. So like, you know, when, when people used to die, I don't know how they survived, you know, knowing that they were immortal. But it was, it was just fascinating. So if you're looking for like a really good dystopian, that one's really good. Then my main jam is I'm historical fiction. So the rest are historical fiction. I tried really hard not to do too many of them, but this is my central joy. <laughs> It's historical fiction. Uh, well, this one's realistic fiction. Ella Valiant is completely fine. That oddball, um, The Rosie Project, have you guys read The Rosie Project as a book? Um, um, Call Me O, you know, those kind of quirky offbeat books. If you haven't read it, Ella Valiant is, that one's great. If you like a good off quirky, kind of weird main character, fantastic. <laughs> a Rip Through Time, probably my favorite adult book of this year. Well, I read that one a couple of years ago. This one's probably this year. So imagine a Vancouver detective has all of her Vancouver, you know, she's solving crimes, modern times. She visits her grandma who's passing away in Edinburgh. She hears a scream in an alley. She runs into it and then slips through time. And now she's in Edwardian uh, times in Edinburgh. And she is a chambermaid or like a house cleaning maid, but has her brain from modern times and is in the house of a morgue. A more like a mortician and so if you like crime if you like historical fiction if you like boom <laughs> it's got all those things a great the third one's coming out this spring so i'm waiting for that but the second is really good too 
Giver of Stars. Anyone read this one? Um, it's a true, based on a true story, not a true story, but it's about in the back Appalachian Mountains, um, they wanted to increase literacy and they would have pack horse librarians, so librarians that were on horses and they would bring books to these like way in the back country, like people who, yeah, people who are, you know, stuffing their um, wood sheds with paper, you know, that kind of like rough back house but they wanted to have them read. And so they would come weekly and drop off books. So you kind of meet all these characters from the Appalachian mountains. Great story. And it's based on a, on a true event. The, the pack horse librarians were a thing. Okay. Signature of all things, Elizabeth Gilbert. This is Eat, Pray, Love. You guys know the person who wrote that. Her fiction is incredible. Like absolutely would recommend it. Signature of all things. Picture that it's in um, when James Cook is going to be sailing around the world. He, the main character is a botanist that sails around with James Cook and is collecting plant samples all around the world to come back to the Victorian big glass houses to make like orchids and things like this. If you like plants, if you like historical fiction, if you like stories of like Tahiti, that kind of thing, it's a two generational book. Fantastic. Love this one. And um, same author, Elizabeth Gilbert. This is uh, City of Girls. 1920s uh this girl grows up in a very um she's more energetic her family's more subtle she goes to visit her aunt in new york and her aunt owns like a playhouse and she sews costumes in this playhouse in 1920s oh, yeah <laughs> so i just wanted to show kind of uh, different timelines and different types of historic fiction i think it's all the slides i have mm -hmm. and boom that's an hour i wanted to make sure i cut it into an hour mm -hmm. any other questions comments happy to answer yeah so i'm going to be 79 captain morgan's i'm next to jesse and um doug near the courts um it's a blue house there you're welcome to bring your phone bring your device and then i'm happy to be like okay let's start downloading <laughs> and then also Lynn has offered to do one-on-one -on -one if you're wanting to set up a TV or whatever uh, Lynn will always come and be tech support for you I will not uh, I will do one time <laughs> yeah so just bring five bucks and then I'm just because we're just redoing the Pino website and I'm just I like it fancy and so I want to just make it nice for for the community yeah so thank you very much for listening appreciate it